Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be setting up a zombie behavior. Before we get started, I'd like to thank all of my Patreon supporters for the amazing support. This will be uploaded to Patreon. So the biggest part in making a zombie differentiate from any other character obviously is going to be animations. Now there are tons of animation packs and if you have another just use that one. Um, the reason I like this one from Ramster um, is simply because it's incredibly complete. It has full locomotion of course. Um, but it has every single type of zombie detail that you'd like to see. Um, so honestly, this is just a really impressive pack. Um, that's the reason I'm, uh, I'm going to be using this one. So here we are in our scene and let's create a character. There we go. I'm going to rotate this 180 and perfect. So on a character, the important part um, first is make sure head IK is turned off. So a lot of zombie animations, um, the zombies do weird things with their head and you know, we kind of like to see that. Um, then we need to make sure that um, we have a couple of uh, components added. So uh, character melee, now I am using um, melee upgrades. A simple reason for that is it makes melee the melee module better. Uh, quite simple, um, but also you know animations will have left hand attacks, right hand attacks, and you know you want to be able to uh, to use both of those. So yeah, melee upgrade. Um, I'll uh, I'll put the link in the description. I've covered it so many times already. Um, then we're going to add our perception, we're going to add behavior, and uh, we're going to add stats, and we're going to be adding uh, local variables. Now we're going to do a couple of things here with the behavior. So first off, I want to randomize which character model was used. Second, I want to um, draw the melee weapon from the start. And third, I want to randomize the idle animations uh, as well. So basically, we'll have a couple of, um, you know, a bit of variety. Um, and we can do all of that through the behavior, um, behavior graph. Now, there's most likely cleaner ways to do this. Um, I'm just going to be adding a couple of bulls. Um, phase one phase two and phase three again then you know I'm sure there are cleaner ways to do this but does it really matter not not really <laughs> so um, these will be the three phases in the behavior to make sure everything goes in the right order because that's actually quite important so we have to make sure the model gets selected first then after that the behavior um, needs to be selected and after the behavior um, the um, locomotion needs to be selected. Now we can't do all of that in the same tasks because you you know you want to have um, sometimes the same model with different locomotions, things like that. Um, so we'd like to keep that uh, clean, and we can actually just do two phases. Let's keep it at two actually. Let's uh, let's shorten it. Um, it's always going to be the same behavior, uh, the same melee weapon, so we can keep that um, as is. So yeah, quite important. Now I'm using um, Sinti Polygon Apocalypse for the character models. You can use whatever you want, you know, it really doesn't matter. Um, as long as you have a couple of different models. Now I do know Sinti has a specific pack just for zombie models, which is really cool because basically you can mix it up a lot more, um, which is quite awesome. Um, in Apocalypse, there's four different models um, we'll be using. So when we go to characters, we have um, zombie female one, two, male one, two. So I'm going to be dragging in a default. Um, again, they'll be um, replaced, so it doesn't really matter. Um, it's just to make sure everything looks good. Uh, the animations look good when we test those out. Awesome. So again, make sure smart head IK is turned off because the animations actually play a lot on the head. Um, so yeah, it's quite quite important. Cool. Um, so yeah, that's uh, that's the basics. So let's um, let's set up the rest. 
So um, we need to create a um, melee weapon here. I'll just call this uh, zombie weapon. There we go. Um, the zombie weapon, um, I'm again using melee upgrade, so we will need prefabs. The animations use left hand and right hand, um, so we'll create uh, left and right. So let's um, create an empty here. Um, let's make sure it's all zero. Turn on uh, gizmos for the moment. Let's call this right hand. And we'll add the uh, blade component. There we go. So by default, uh, the bone is set to right hand, so that's perfect. Uh, however, it's set to a box, which for a hand doesn't make a lot of sense. So we'll change it to a sphere. I know it's a bit of a big hit box, a big hit box, but um, that actually helps us quite a lot um, with hit detection things like that. Um, weapon trail. I'm going to turn that off. It, it's hands. For me, it doesn't make a lot of sense if that's there, um, but you can keep that. So uh, then we're going to duplicate this, just turn it into left hand, uh, change this to again left hand, um, and yeah, that's uh, that's it. So let's drag in those prefabs. There we go. Remove those. Going to drag in left and right hand. The order literally doesn't matter. You select it through the clips. And then, as you can see, um, we need a bunch of animations. Now, um, you can add a lot of variety here, and I'll show you a bit of variety just for fun. Because, um, you know, it, it is cool that it's possible with a melee upgrade. And um, the animation pack I'm using actually does have. Um, the three heights, you know, upper, mid, and lower body, um, which is pretty cool. Unfortunately, for the back uh, varieties, there's a lot less variety, so we're just going to keep it to one. Um, but we technically we shouldn't be seeing the back animations all that much, um, so that's uh, that's completely fine. Um, and for now, I'll just add one clip, and obviously we need to add a. Um, a locomotion state as well. We're not adding a shield. It's a zombie. It doesn't have a shield, um, or it won't block either. You know, it's it's a zombie. Cool. Uh, make sure this is enabled, by the way, and let's put this to A. Um, by default, it's turned off. Then let's create um, some clips. There we go. Um, hit front uh, high. I know, quite specific. Um, and yeah, we'll, uh, we'll go into the animations um, I have here. Um, and there's a, a bunch of them. So we're looking for the uh, the hit uh, reactions. And I'll, uh, I'll show you all of the hit reactions just so you get, a, get an impression. Well, let's keep it simple. So we have um, hit head, which is upper. We have uh, the leg, which is obviously low. Um, we have the arm, which would be mid body. And we have a leg again. Now I'm going to be using one of the leg animations for the back, because as you can see, it goes slightly to the front. Um, and with the, all of the others, he actually moves back. Now that would be really weird for a hit animation. Um, so yeah, that's what we'll be using. Make sure um, this is all turned off, by the way. Um, so no root motion on XZ, which is turned on on all of these, just so you know. Um, looping is turned on on hit and uh, attack animations as well, and then it needs to be turned off. So yeah, we uh, we have a couple here. So I'm going to be using um, hit, um, the hit reactions, and what I'm doing here, um, just to make it a bit easier with the clips, because otherwise it, it can be quite a pain. Um, I'm going to be duplicating them. So duplicate, and then we will drag them into our folder. It's not necessary, it just makes life easier. So hit. Now I do want to preview this, so I'm going to drag in my uh, zombie here, um, and I want to see what it looks like. And yeah, that's it's perfect. Cool. So that's the, the hit for the head. We don't need to uh, assign a bone here. This is a hit reaction, not an attack. Um, so we can turn off this as well. Um, interruptible, yes, vulnerable, yes, and stagger. 
there we go uh, make sure to extract root motion um, and then we're done so we can duplicate this um, and then we can rename this to uh, mid um, then we'll select I think I had right arm not sure anymore <laughs> I think it was right arm, right? So yeah, there we go. Right arm. Cool. Um, not sure why um, this is not. Okay. Ah, and there we go. Um, so yeah, extract the root motion. Keep everything else the same. Um, and let's duplicate this yet again. Um, we can now call this one uh, low there we go um, and then we'll do the um, right leg extract and then um, we're going to duplicate again and this is going to be um, hit back and yeah that's you know not a lot of variety there and we'll do left leg Sometimes it's weird that, yeah, that happens. Anyway, um, yeah, for the back, we only have the one. But again, in combat, it should hardly ever happen that we have, um, you know, we have a back hit. Um, you should only have that when you surprise them from the back once. And it's fine if it's the same one. I don't really care. So um, now we need to drag those in. So um, let's make sure. So upper body, um, mid body and lower body um, this is uh, the back so we can just drag in the same one now we have the airborne ones as well and I don't have different ones for airborne uh, I just don't have them so I'm just going to be selecting uh, the same ones uh, here not really sure if airborne is something you have a lot with uh, <laughs> <laughs> with zombies I don't think you will ever have that um, maybe if they fall or something like that and you attack them right in the fall um, but yeah you know can't cover everything um, and for now for knockback I'm just going to do uh, this one I don't really uh, want to use knockback for this at all uh, but you need to fill in a clip because otherwise you'll get errors so yeah then um, we'll create a new clip uh, which is going to be our uh, attack clip And for now, we'll uh, we'll just keep it at one. So uh, combo um, A. There we go. Combo A. And uh, for combo A, um, let's have a look. And I'm just going to uh, select uh, attack one. So you have a couple of attacks here. Um, and as you can see, it's using the left hand primarily here for the attack. So we'll select left hand. And then attack 2 um, is right hand and attack 3 is left hand again. So yeah, you have uh, quite the little combo. You can actually just create the entire combo. What does it matter? There we go. Duplicate those as well and just drag them in. Again, don't need to do that. It just makes things easier. Um, so attack 1. Let's zoom out a bit. Okay, so we do need to move that quite a bit actually. Yeah, that's better. Let's extend this a tiny bit and then we're good. Awesome. So this is interruptible, vulnerable and steady. Um, it's all perfect. Now we do need to select a bone here because this is an attack and this was primarily left hand. I know both are used at some point but it's the left one that actually does uh, most of the work. Cool. Then uh, let's duplicate this one. Um, and let's just call this combo AA. There we go. Um, we'll drag in attack 2. Um, which is the right hand. Yeah, that's actually fine. You can tweak it a bit, but I'm good with that. Extract root motion. Did I do that on the first? I didn't do that on the first. 
cool um, so this is the right hand and then let's duplicate it yet again rename this to um, triple A and then we'll drag in attack 3 and that's the left hand again yeah I'm fine with that as well extract root motion um, and make sure to select left hand cool so we've got a um, couple of attacks here as well there we go so we have combo A A and A now there's there are more attacks um, which we can have a look at uh, after so for now I'm not going to add any impacts or anything like that I'm just going to leave it as is and yeah pretty uh, pretty cool so we do need a locomotion state and that is quite important I'm actually going to create a, a simple folder here now to get uh, to get rid of everything we already used there we go I want to keep them as a reference of course but don't need to see them in here constantly so for the locomotion um, it's actually really simple um, we have a full locomotion set um, let's rename this to um, zombie default locomotion let's call this one already zero one oh not zero fourteen zero one because um, like I said we're going to be um, mixing it up between three different default animations um, and the way we do that is we just create one locomotion then duplicate it two times and replace the uh, idle animation and that's it um, so for the uh, these animations um, you know just again go here we don't need to duplicate these um, the important thing um, with um, all of these animations is to use the in place one um, except for idle idle isn't called in place so we have the idle ones for idle we can leave on um, root motion on XZ it actually um, makes it look a bit better um, so I'd recommend keeping that turned on um, leave on loop as well and everything else um, and as you can see, you know, the, this, the idle animations are quite different, uh, which is cool. That's why we want to mix it up between, uh, between the three. Want to have that randomized. Um, so yeah, we'll keep that. Um, however, for everything else, we want in place and we need to make sure that this is turned off. Now to make sure that you can select everything in place easily, just, um, you know, select this. and um, you know make sure to drag in all of the runs on one of them I'll randomly um, drag in forward in place run two instead of one just to have a bit more variety um, but yeah that's it um, and then just drag in the normal walk and the uh, normal run animation so not the sprint or the fast forward one um, so just a normal walk and normal run um, so yeah, pause the video, drag them in, um, and I'll show you the end result of what I have for the locomotion in, uh, in two seconds. Cool, so um, here we are. So we've got uh, idle one, all of the in place run. For some reason, the right backward is, isn't named uh, correctly. It's just take one, but that's okay. Um, and we have, um, you know, all of the in place animations. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to uh, duplicate this um, twice. Let's call this um, locomotion three. And let's call this locomotion uh, two. There we go. So we have uh, three different ones. And then on um, locomotion two, I'm going to uh, select idle two, idle three. And on idle 2, I'll uh, change the run forward because simply because we have it, not because it's necessary. Um, but we have run forward uh, 2 in place as well. Um, again, completely unnecessary. Don't have to do that. Um, just mixes it up but, uh, even more. So, yeah, why not? Awesome. So, we've got all of these. Now, we do need to select the default um, on the. Um, on the melee weapon, um, we have to. It's not really a choice. Um, and yeah, so we've got everything set up. 
Um, so let's set up our uh, behavior tree now. And inside of the behavior tree, we're going to basically add that randomization for everything. Um, we'll do it in two phases. Um, and yeah, you know, then we can set up everything else. So let's create our behavior tree. Uh, zombie behavior. There we go. Let's uh, create our uh, root here. Um, selector. So here is where things get interesting. So we get um, this selector is basically going to dictate all of the actual behavior. Um, this is going to be this side is going to be our selection for um, our you know our actual setup. So let's do um, variable bool. As you remember, we set these up uh, on the, the character. So phase one and two. Um, and we're only done with this part of the setup once phase two is completed as well. Um, and then, um, you know, we can, uh, we can start. So um, phase two is not complete, then we'll do this. And if phase two is complete, then we're going to do this. Cool. Um, here we're going to be using a uh, random selector. So random selector. This is going to be uh, using the same condition, um, but in this case it's phase uh, one. Needs to be sure that this is firstly uh, selected, so this takes priority. So if phase one is false, um, then it will do this, and then if you know it will uh, continue to phase two. Um, and this is going to be a, a random selector as well. So the only thing we need random here are um, the models and um, the uh, idle animations. We don't need uh, the weapon to be randomized. The weapon is always going to be the same. Um, so we can just chuck that in with the first one. Now the order in which we do this is actually quite important. Um, so we have uh, four different character models, um, well at least in my pack I do, and we have uh, three different um, idle animations. Let's make sure we select phase two here, sorry. Cool. Um, so let's sort this, um, get a bit of structure here. So first action is a character model. So invoker, um, and then, um, yeah, we need the character model. So let's hope they're just called zombie. Okay. There we go, uh, zombie female one, perfect. So we can copy that over, um, cause you know, we'll all have the same actions, just different models. Um, mill and mill perfect so we've got um, all of our options here then um, we're going to do a wait um, it doesn't have to be long because normally setting that model should be really fast um, there we go then we are going to draw the weapon. Now we know we don't have any intro animations because well the weapons are a class so they do <laughs> hands. So they don't really need intro animations, but yeah. Um, so zombie weapon, there we go. So let's uh, copy that over. And yeah, this is all going to be the same. There's no variation in the weapon. Perfect. Then cool, and then we need to set the bool um, invoker um, phase one uh, true. So phase one is done. 
and then it will skip this and go here. Perfect. Um, so here we're going to be uh, selecting the states uh, for the invoker. So um, zombie locomotion one. Going to do again the small weight. It might be exaggerated, but um, want to make sure it, it is able to complete it. Um, and this is phase two. There we go. Weight 0 0.1. And then the last um, locomotion change. Perfect. So once phase two will be completed, uh, it can no longer do this and it can no longer do this in general. And then it will skip ahead to here. And that's it. Um, that's everything for the start. Now, in order to properly test this out, obviously, um, we're going to be uh, duplicating our character a couple of times. Because, um, yes, on random still means there's a big chance you'll get the same model. Because, um, you know, you can literally just have the same model three times in a row. I mean, that's possible. So that's why I don't want to add um, a lot of them. So at least we'll... Uh, We'll have a better shot at seeing some variety here. Cool. So let's save this and let's give this a go. And yeah, that's definitely not working. <laughs> not at all. Um, so let's have a look as to why it's not working. Because we didn't drag in a uh, behavior on e any of them. So yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Um, so let's actually give them a behavior. Should have done that beforehand. Really dumb of me. Apologies. And there we go. Cool. Now, as you can see, they're hovering uh, a bit. And yes, the zombies do look really similar. Yes, you can have literal duplication um, of, you know, both the model or the animations. As you can see here, we have a differentiation in the model. Same idols. Here we have a com <laughs> completely different idol. Uh, again, a different idol because it's not the same. Um, and then we have some more variety here. So, yeah, as you can see, this this is why I wanted to uh, duplicate it so many times just so we saw that. Now, we do have some hovering going on here. So let's stay in play mode. Um, let's actually try this out. Turn off those gizmos. Um, and on the animator, let's do 0.1. And yeah, that's better. Cool. Now, as you can see, the root motion for the idol is done center of mass. And that might not actually be the best thing to do. Um, so we'll, uh, we'll make a change there as well. Now, we can get rid of everything else. Uh, minus 0 0.1. There we go. Um, yeah, that was my bad. Um, and let's have a look at those idols. Um, yeah, they're done center of mass. Let's just do original. Because original is how they were uh, meant to be. So that should be better. Cool. So 0 0.1 might still not be enough. And it's not actually. Wow. Okay. Let's. Uh... Okay, they're just wonky. Okay. 
Yeah, I don't know. Seems pretty good. But yeah, it's uh, it's still a tiny bit wonky. But that's okay. Um, but yeah, this is a, a nice way to add, um, you know, default variety. Um, you know, as much as variety as can be done. Obviously, if, for example, you're using that other Sinti Polygon a zombie pack, which has like 20 different zombies, um, it's going to be a lot cooler because, you know, you have even more variety. If you have multiple zombie animation packs, just drop in different idols um, so you have even more. Um, I think it's cool and, you know, it's nice having the behavior. Just do all of that. Yes, it's a bit of a setup, but you only need to do it once and, um, you know, never again. So, yeah, pretty cool. So, uh, the next step here is going to be setting up, um, you know, how the zombie actually acts, how the zombie actually behaves. Um, it's a zombie, so it doesn't have to be incredibly complex. Um, but we do, you know, we can, um, you know, have a bit of variety here. Um, so, yeah, let's, uh, let's set up the next phase. Cool. So, let's start off with some of the uh, basics. So, um, we'd like a... Uh, selector that uh, basically splits up the basic tasks so death being hit and uh, for now everything else so uh, death is going to be relatively simple there's not much that needs to be done for this so attribute value uh, invoker health uh, less or equal to zero then we're going to ragdoll the invoker, don't recover, and um, stop behavior uh, of the invoker. That way the behavior stops as well, um, the character is in a ragdoll, and you know it takes up less performance, and perfect. Um, then for the next task, um, when we're going to compare, is uh, a new variable which we'll uh, set up in a bit. Um, no, two new variables actually. Let's uh, let's set those up. So we're going to go to the character, then uh, let's uh, plus. We're going to do a spotted player. Um, it, it's one that I quite often use um, in the tutorials. Just works for me. Um, so if you're wondering why this is different than can be seen, for example, the, just for the uh, perception, um, we're going to be using both, and it will uh, it will be clear in a bit. And then we're going to add another bool, which is uh, hit. Now hit is literally only going to be for this task, um, and uh, did I? Sp no, I'm pretty sure this has to be a D. Yeah, not spelling correctly uh, can always cause issues. Um, and hit is literally just going to be for this task, um, nothing else. So um, if um, bool local variable uh, invoker uh, spotted player, if that's uh, false, so he hasn't seen the player yet, and um, he is being hit and with he I mean the zombie um, then um, he's going to uh, do a reaction so we're going to wait about three seconds for the hit reaction then we're going to do a set uh, so target uh, invoker target is the player wait I don't know, 0 0.5, no, 0 0.1, there we go, um, and then input melee, um, and we'll do the uh, A attack, um, which is pretty simple, it's a pretty basic attack, um, but it does the job, which is this one, I think that's a correct one, it's a good reaction. Yeah, I think that's a good reaction. Cool. So um, input uh, melee A, and he's uh, he's going to uh, attack the player. Perfect. 
So um, we need to test this out. We need to make sure this works before we go on and continue everything else. So let's hit save. Um, and we'll add a player to our scene. Um, this player will um, we'll give the player some stats just to make sure we can test it out as well if you know the zombie actually does some damage. Um, character melee. There we go. Um, and because um, this video is really just focusing on the player, uh, on the zombie AI, we're not focusing on the player. We're going to keep it really, really simple. So um, let's have a look, by the way. Um, perception 10, field of view 114, that's perfect. Um, on the player, no, let's not do it on the player. Let's do a separate trigger. Um, and this is just going to be the really basic. So on start, we're going to um, draw a weapon. Um, we're just going to use sword weapon from the melee examples. Um, so pretty basic. And then um, I'm just going to add another trigger here. Mouse down, left. Input melee. Now keep in mind, this is just for testing purposes, so it's nothing fancy. It's just really, really, really basic stuff. Um, but we need to make sure it works. Now, if uh, you know with melee upgrade installed, we do need to make sure that everything here is correct. So when we have a look at um, the uh, melee attacks, for example, uh, we need to make sure that they are tied to bones as well. So um, make sure that all of the attacks are tied to bones um, and they need to be attacks. Um, now in case uh, you don't have to look at the clips um, because this is the melee examples, all of the clips, um, you know, they're all going to be right hands um, because that's why we need melee uh, upgrades um, because by default, the melee module doesn't do that. Um, so yeah, so you really don't have to look. Um, at which hand they are perfect awesome now we need to do the same for the uh, zombie clips as well by the way so uh, we need to select the bone um, let's so let's drag in that uh, zombie there we go um, and let's preview So both hands are used, but I think the left is actually used more. So we'll, we'll do left. Um, it has a longer reach. I think that's just a better choice. Um, then this is just the right hand. So that's quite simple, right hand. And uh, the third is uh, left only. So no debate there. Perfect, cool. So yeah, pretty basic, but we need to set those things up because otherwise it's not gonna work. And awesome. So we have the, the basics here all set up. So the player has character melee, uh, he'll draw the weapon. Now in order to make sure it just fits in a bit better, I'm, I'm just going to uh, drag in some generic character. Um, there we go doesn't really matter and let's hit play and yeah we need a <laughs> we need a character motor as well um, so let's create that character motor just going to do my couple basic things here um, yeah we're all good cool because I added it later, um, let's make sure it's actually dragged in just to make sure it works. And we're done. Cool. Now in case the sword is not in your in the hand perfectly, um, it's pretty simple. So what you need to do um, with the prefab, um, there we go. Make sure you select the parents and not the mesh make sure you select the object um, place it in the hand here so just you know rotate drag it along so it fits about in the hand 
um, then copy this so copy components um, then go to the prefab so sword weapon go to the prefab uh, paste this in uh, paste um, and you know exit play mode and enter play mode again and it will be perfectly in the hand so one of the things that got slightly simpler with melee upgrade um, is this now it would actually be nice if we upgrade this as well so why not um, there we go cool um, so I keep the gizmos turned on just so we can see it actually works. We have the hit reaction, he's hit. Um, but then he's not actually doing anything. Okay, interesting. Um, let's have a look at, oh yeah, because we're not actually getting uh, the hit bull yet. Cool. Um, but at least, you know, this works, the player works. Um, that's completely fine. Now let's add the trigger uh, on the uh, character as well. So uh, trigger, um, receive uh, attack. Um, then we're going to do uh, conditions. And we can set up the basics as well. So attribute value, uh, invoker, um, health is greater or equal to uh, 0 0.1. And let's actually not do invoker just to be sure it works. Evoker is always a tricky one. Um, and then we're going to do um, attributes, um, game object, character, health, subtract, I don't know, we'll do 10. Then um, we're going to duplicate this um, and make sure the actions are duplicated as well. And we drag in those new actions. And I'm going to do this on top, by the way. So on top, so this is the default. And then we're going to do a bool, uh, variable, yeah, bool, um, local. And we can just drag in our character now, hit, um, and then um, duplicate uh, and uh, spot it player. So if spot a player is turned off um, and hit is, uh, do we need to do that? Yeah, and hit is uh, turned off, then um, we're going to um, turn on hit. There we go. Now what we need to do in the behavior um, is that once this is done, um, and we'll need to look how long that animation is. Um, where is it? Combo A, um, 2.3. Okay, perfect. So, um, wait, 2.3, um, and then uh, bool, local variable invoker hit um, is going to be turned off. Perfect. So, yeah. A couple of conditions. So we want to make sure hit is turned off only when uh, that this happens um, and that the player isn't spotted. So if the player is spotted, it's going to ignore this and it's just going to do the regular. And that means it's going to um, ignore this as well, simply put. So let's try this out. Let's see if it works. Perfect. Awesome. So it doesn't do anything else, um, which makes sense. And if we hit it again, um, oh, well, he's still tracking. Um, but it's the same thing is going to happen because we're not setting anything for, um, we're not setting anything up for the whole spotted system. So that's what we need to do next. 
There we go. So let's save. Um, in the selector, and um, let's do another selector. Actually, there we go. So um, spotted player uh, is true. Then we're going to get into his walking around, following the player, attacking, blah, blah, blah. Um, if spotted player is still false. There we go. Um, task. And uh, task. And then we are using C. So invoker can uh, not see player. Um, he's just going to be chilling, basically. Um, you can have a patrol. I've done that so many times in videos, but I mean, in a lot of zombie games, they don't actually do anything. They just stand there. Um, but if you want to add a patrol, you can add a patrol. This is all basic stuff. Um, and then uh, here, um, if he can see, so that's a priority. Um, then bool local um, invoker uh, spotted player is going to be true. There we go. Awesome. Um, so yeah, once spotted player is true, um, we're going to be standard ignoring this. Um, so this will no longer be the case. Uh, and then we get into, you know, all of the other tasks. Now let's have a look and uh, see if this actually worked. Um, if after hitting him once, uh, we're no longer getting into that um, state where he does the melee attack. So he's doing it once, perfect. And if we're hitting him again, um, he's not doing the attack. As you can see, he's not doing the attack. And why isn't he doing the attack? Um, it's simply because this can no longer comply because spotted player is true. Plain and simple, um, which is good, uh, which is obviously really good. Um, that's why we want it to happen. Um, so yeah, awesome stuff. Just hitting, hitting him a lot. Cool. Now, the, the, the reason we use this bull of spotted player is that for some reason, you know, we hit him, get behind him, he can no longer see the player. Now, the, um, and, and that's obviously what we want to happen as well, that, you know, you know, he can no longer see the player. Um, but that would mean that we could get into that hit reaction again, and we don't want that to happen. Uh, this is basically the zombie is now engaged in combat mode, because he's seen the player once, and you know, he's going to be tracking the player to make sure it keeps um, keeps happening. Now, if we kill him, um, he ragdolls um, and, you know, hitting the collider doesn't do anything um, because the behavior has uh, stopped. It's no longer updating. You know, that's, uh, that's it. So, yeah, it's no longer updating. Uh, we did a four stop and it's... Uh, it's done. So cool. Um, we're off to a great start. So we've got all of the basics. Um, and now what is left is, um, yeah, not that much. <laughs> uh, so we need a uh, task or not a task. Uh, let's sort this. Um, there is a quite popular, um, popular action uh, on the hub. Um, which I use a lot, um, which is distance. Um, so not the distance below, we have that by default, um, but it's just distance, has nothing to do with perception. Um, so this is simply based objects between objects, you know, if the distance is greater, equal, different, um, which is an awesome, I'll link it in the description. It's an awesome uh, custom action. I think it's quite essential for a lot of behavioral stuff. Um, so yeah, we'll be using that. Um, and it's simply called distance. As you might guess, what is this distance going to be doing? Um, and actually, let's make this a uh, selector instead. There we go. So uh, distance invoker and player 
um, is greater than, and let's do, I don't know, 2.5. We'll try that out. Perfect. And then um, if it's um, less than uh, 2.5, Um, it's going to we're going to do the attacking stuff if it's less than he's going to walk too now we're not doing follow um, because that actually causes some issues with the melee module and it just doesn't work well so we're going to do um, move character and this is just going to be on repeat um, invoker is going to move to um, variable and I'm going to do a local um, don't have to do that you can just make it a global I'm doing a local so I can share it uh, and this is just simply player and then uh, on my zombie uh, I'm going to be uh, adding a game object player and I'm just going to drag in the player there we go um, so yeah so if the distance is um, less than, he's going to be moving towards the player. Do not turn on wait until arrives this loop, so he'll just keep walking. Um, awesome. And the nice thing here is that um, if this is no longer correct, this will automatically stop because it's not waiting for something. It's just looping. That's all it does. Um, <coughs> If it's less than this, um, we want something else to happen. Um, so we're just going to do a, a random selector here um, of a couple of tasks. Cool. So um, input melee. Um, the weight uh, of 0 0.5 and the reason I do this weight is because otherwise it's too aggressive doesn't give you an opportunity to ever block um, it's not fun while playing um, and we can do like a, a double attack or something um, and then make sure to add that here as well um, and then on this task Um, you can do, uh, I don't know, you can do a single. You can just mix it up, you know, create some variation. Um, and this one we're going to... Uh, just Let's just wait. Yeah, we're just going to do a short wait. Now the reason I'm doing this, um, the short wait, is because with zombie games you always have tons of zombies. If all of them constantly non-stop attack let's actually do two seconds um, it's just no fun um, you know there's zombies they're not smart so that's fine so let's give this a go let's try this out okay oh. I could have easily evaded that um, he's running towards us um, <laughs> You know, fast zombie. Um, he's doing his attacks. You know, he's doing everything he's supposed to be doing. Um, so yeah, we're all good. Okay, and we can finish him off. Cool. Now, um, one of the things um, that you might want to do, you know, obviously, it's the whole thing with zombies. Fast zombies, slow zombies. Um, what do you want to do? Um... And you could have some variation actually um, with that based on the models you select. So, you know, we, we set up a bunch of different models, um, you know, with the, the melee weapons. Then we set up the default uh, locomotions. Now, if you want to create like slow zombies and one fast zombie, for example, but you don't want too much of a hassle in behavior, you don't want to recreate an entire new one, um, we can actually easily do that. So um, let's say this one, um, 
what do they actually look like? <laughs> uh, they all look so similar. I mean, that's the thing. I should have had imported a different uh, zombie pack so we'd have some variation. But you know, it's fine. Um, yeah, there's only these are the only zombies. Okay, um, let me create a duplicate. Um, rename uh, zombie 03. There we go. Let's open this up. Um, we're we're gonna create our own uh, our own variation basically because okay let's do it not here one of the annoying things with uh, HCRP at times oh well there we go so we'll create our own uh, own variation here so this is an attachment uh, we can just uh, pick up a different attachment for the character so character attach. We have some armor stuff, um, which is quite cool actually, so we'll definitely use that. Um, we can give this one a uh, baseball helmet, so let's remove, oh, prefab, uh, unpack, yeah, sure. Let's remove that, so we have a uh, football helmet, sorry, not baseball helmet, football helmet, uh, which is quite distinctive, uh, I'd say. There's something else in this pack. Not really, is there? No. Oh, these are all pretty creepy. <laughs> pretty creepy as well. Uh, that's actually quite cool. Um, uh, you can definitely use that for some other variation. Uh, I was looking for, I don't know, something for his vest type thing, um, but that's okay. Maybe in um, Polygon Military Character. Okay, Attachments. So beards, beards, hair, hats. looking for something for his chest I don't know what it could be but okay well guess not um, we'll just keep it at um, the helmet then and that's our own variation not really exciting I was hoping for a bit more that's okay that's fine uh, so I'm just going to remove this uh, the prefab we had before and just drag in this new one uh, that's the easiest way sweet um, on here, um, let's just all reset this back to zero, uh, just to be sure, and we're done. Cool. So in our behavior, um, let's create a different uh, task here. So we have a separate task, um, and then uh, we'll drag in uh, this. And yeah, this is going to be the, um, you know, this is going to be the fast zombie variation. Uh, and it's quite simple. So um, on here, um, we'll just turn on um, property um, invoker and then can run. And on the other ones, um, they can't. Cool. Um, let's make sure um, we do that here actually. Um, so we can be sure it actually sets the property. Cool. So only this last one can run. Um, and let's drag in our guy with the helmet. Um, so it's the only one that can run. And then um, for the attacks, we can add um, an additional attack. Um, which is, you know, only for him, for example. Um, and then uh, conditions. I'm not sure if there's a property uh, condition we could use. Um, yeah, can run, perfect. Um, if the invoker can run, 
that's awesome. Um, and then we're going to do uh, another input melee. And um, let's grab uh, B. We'll set that up in uh, in two seconds. Um, allowed to complete, of course. Sorry about that. Did I set that up for the rest? Yeah, okay, cool. Cool, cool, cool. Um, so yeah, we'll uh, do a B. Um, and it's quite simple because there's, the <laughs> there's not that many animations. Um, so we'll duplicate it. Um, and let's have a look in our um, animations. Um, attack. I think we have the attack forward, which is quite cool. And then we have a forward jump. Oh, man, that's awesome. Oh, I already love this. Okay, so we'll do <laughs> we'll do the forward jump. Um, just going to duplicate it um, and drag it uh, here again. So, oh, it's called take one. That's, that's kind of a shame. Um, let's rename this to uh, combo uh, B. There we go. Um, and then drag in our uh, take one extract um, in take one we need to turn on um, original original and um, nothing uh, here so I'll set it to original but I'm not going to bake it in um, let's have a look what that looks like actually I think it's gonna I think it's gonna be quite awesome so let's drag him in I mean, it's definitely the type of animation that only seems to make sense. Oh my god, that's so cool. <laughs> okay, so it's um, right hand. There we go. That's just awesome. That's just really cool. I love it. Um, perfect. And then we have a uh, charge attack. So, obviously the odds of me getting that character are incredibly slim. Um, because it's completely randomized. Um, which is the point, you know, I mean, don't get me wrong, that is the point why we're doing this. It's randomizing it so you know it takes off a, a bit of a workload and you can have a variation on a character in a behavior uh, with incredible ease you still have a different look um, you can even you know use the can run to uh, um, condition uh, to set up a default locomotion for that character in case you would like that um, so you can just drag in a, a different task um, have this same property invoker can run as a condition and you set up a default locomotion so in case you want to do that one that's a bit more aggressive just so it you know it's a bit more visible um, it's up to you you can definitely do that um, so yeah I'm I, <laughs> I dragged in a ton of zombies here and that's simply to uh, hopefully increase the odds um, of actually uh, getting it Should have, uh, should have done more with that. Dragging them out a tiny bit more so we actually have the opportunity to um, hit one and not the others. Cool. Let's see. Um, hopefully, one of them randomized will be uh, will be our new character prefab. Um, so let's have a look. I'm going to turn off the gizmos because now it's confusing. Um, and yeah, we have one, two. Okay, two of them are fast zombies. So what I'm going to do is I'm still going to um, hit this one, just to be sure. Um, and then he's going to attack and he's going to walk towards me, or she. This is I'm pretty sure this is one of the female zombies.
Cool. Okay. Now let's uh, do the same experiment. I'll pick this one just to make sure where the dead body is not going to hinder us. Now the basics are pretty much the same. He's going to attack, but now technically he should be, yeah, he's running. Um, <laughs> which is really cool. Okay, well, bit bit of bad luck. You know, it's randomized, so the, what are the odds I'm going to get the right uh, attack? But yeah, um, it's all functional. So, you know, this is an easy way to uh, only create one behavior um, that actually covers tons of different uh, models. And the nice thing is, you know, especially with zombies, if you want little variation, um, you don't need a lot of variation. So, um, you know, you could actually... Uh, instead of using this property, you can create an additional bool like runner, uh, berserker, um, and set those um, here, you know, with the one, the prefab you want. And then you can have completely different attacks for a runner, berserker, um, you know, you can have a big zombie, small zombie, um, but all set it up in the exact same behavior. So it saves you a lot of time and it's completely randomized. And I, I think that's fun, um, you know, makes it a bit more interesting. Uh, and it also just saves tons and tons of time. So yeah, that's uh, that's it for this video. Thanks so much for watching. Um, I'll be sharing this on Patreon as well. So in case you don't want to follow the video and just want to uh, download it, you can do that there. So thanks again and have a great day.